Hello, this is Andreas Ness, business coach. Today I'm interviewing Karen Williams and she runs a company called LibroTas. She's also known as a book mentor. And I wanted to know more about her journey. And first of all, where is the name coming from? <laughs> Gosh, um, well, LibroTas is it's made up of two words. So Libro, as in Latin for book, and Libertas, as in freedom. Because I find that when clients write their book, it gives them the freedom and it gives their readers the freedom they didn't have already. And the freedom to express themselves, the freedom to get their message out there in a bigger way. Okay, and, 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 and what made you become a book mentor? Where does it all come from? How did Gosh. you start it off? So it started out, let me take you back to January 2006, right. when I went through a moment with my boss that really propelled me into a different trajectory. And I decided to um, find myself a coach. I decided to train as a coach and I started, well, I started my business and I also found a new job at the same time. Um, so I started out as a coach in November 2006. I learned the hard way how to set up a business. Was that a, a business coach or a, a, a life coach? A life coach at the very beginning, but then I soon realised I needed a business coach because when mm -hmm. you start as a coach, you've got to learn the marketing, the business, how to set up a website. Right. Social media is in its infancy around about that time. Yeah. There's so much to learn. So I have myself, got myself a business coach very right. much early on. Right. Right. But the first few years I struggled. I struggled to find my way. I struggled to find my niche. I struggled to really, I had some really great contracts with corporates and also with individuals. Mm -hmm. um, but the turning point was me, for me, was writing my first book, which happened in summer of 2009, when I spent time with some amazing coaches, found out the secrets of their successes. And then I wrote a book about it. And um, right. I'd love to say the rest is history, but right. that, was, that was a huge turning point in my business and my life. So I take it you interviewed these coaches and asked them about their successes and that's yeah. when you use it as your as a portfolio for your book, yeah? Yeah, it was. It was my NLP Master Practitioner qualification. I did my modelling project and I initially started interviewing these people to find out what it took for to have the right mindset to be a successful coach but also run a successful business. So I really drilled down into some of the strategies they were employing and some of the um, the day-to-day -day stuff that they did. And I found it was transforming my business, so I had to write about it. I had to, for me, that felt like the easiest way of sharing that information with more people right, because so. I needed to tell more people about it. So two things came out of it. Yeah, First of all, you learned from them yeah. how they did it, Absolutely. so their journey. Yeah. And then you used that material to create your own content yeah. and you wrote your first book. Yeah. That's brilliant. So how, how, did that actually change the way that you conducted your business and did it make you successful? It did. It really put me, I think, back in 2009 or 2011, it took me 18 months to get the book written and published. Yeah. So back then, not many people were writing books. Those who were writing books were very successful already, whereas I was kind of you know, fledgling in term, terms of my business. I was quite new to it. Um, but it really did put me and my business on the map because it increased my credibility, it got me noticed. And because I was aligning myself with some amazing coaches across the UK and in the US, mm. so I'm talking very successful people, yeah. that I found it really did. It propelled me um, and my business totally in that, in that period. Wow. And, and so then what happened? Did you then decide that you don't want to be a coach anymore or you want to be, you still want to be a coach, but a specific coach in a niche of writing book coach? Well, type it then? took me another three years to get to that point um, because I, I wrote my second book in 2012. Mm -hmm. I then went on to write my, my third and my fourth one came out of a lot of my clients who were coaches where I was back in 2006. Mm -hmm. They were therapists. They said, Karen, you've written a couple of books. How did you do it? And I went, well, it's easy. Yeah. And they said, no, it's not. And I said, no. <laughs> So it took me probably about a year of helping people alongside their business and their book to finally making that leap, rebranding as Libertas, and actually making that leap to become a book mentor. So it's around about beginning of 2014, I think I took my first client through the whole process. Okay, that's interesting. So for those of us that are watching this now and haven't written a book, mm -hmm. how would you describe the process of writing a book? Well, I break it down into 10 principles, um, and there are sort of sub-principles as part of it. But the most important thing is to be really clear on your vision. So I, Stephen Covey, starting with the end in mind is really mm -hmm. the first thing. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. starting with the end in mind, be absolutely crystal clear on your vision. What do you want your book to do for you, for your business, for your readers as well? Mm -hmm. Because any project that's going to be successful has to, from a business point of view, has to have the business in mind. So it's thinking about, okay, so what is it going to give you that you don't have already? What is it going to give your reader? And so that's the first part is the vision. The second part is the alignment, which comes under starting with the end in mind and making sure that your book is absolutely aligned with your business. Okay. So what do you want to get known for? Who is your ideal reader and your ideal client? Because right. if your book is going to be successful from a business point of view, it needs to be focused on, you know, people need to go to your website, read your book, read your social media, post, watch a video, 
and everything needs to be aligned in terms right. of your branding, in terms of your book. So it's all part of your marketing, really, isn't it? It's all it? part of your marketing. Um, right. And then that leads on to the third part, which is leverage. Because right. unless you leverage it, you know, you put your book on Amazon, you know, I've got some of mine here. Yeah. You know, you put your book on Amazon, you might make a few pounds per book if you're really lucky. So you need to know how to leverage your book. You know, what do you want to have happen after your book is published? Yeah. Do you want to get more speaking engagements? Do you want to podcast interviews? Do you want to, um, when I, actually, when I wrote this book, a really prime example, um, this one I wrote, wrote in six months because I created an online program. I ran that, wrote the book at the same time. And right. there's, not, there's something about having a deadline of I'm running a webinar on Friday lunchtime that makes you write it. You can't get, you can't, there's no excuse then. You have you to have sit to do down it. and do it, right. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, so, so, so that's all of the first three steps. Find your vision, mm -hmm. then, you know, create really what, what, would, what would it do for your business. Yeah. yeah. And then find the audience and how you can use yeah. it as a leverage tool, yeah? Yeah. yeah. And what so that's just, that's just principle number one. Oh, it's all, all part and principle yeah, number one. Yeah, it's all part ah, principle number okay, one. So okay, I'm running do, right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even talk about writing until principle number five because okay. the planning that's involved in a book is, is what's going to make it easy to write. And I've learned this from my own books because if you start writing without a plan, without a clear idea of where it's going to go, you know, you could write thousands of words that you, that you waste that go in the bin or you have to rewrite them because they're not targeted in the right way. Um, so after starting with the end in mind, the next thing is subject. Mm -hmm. So they're all, they're all 10 of them are S's. So subject is the second thing. Be absolutely clear on your subject for your book. Because if you, most of us, you know, as, as coaches, consultants, trainers, therapists, we have got loads of information. Mm -hmm. and I'm sure if I asked you, Andreas, of what you, what you could share, you could probably give me 101 topics. Yeah. So really honing down the subject for this book is what I help clients to do. They know exactly what's in it, um, rather than try and put everything in one book. Then it right. can get quite complicated. So you just, so you're saying you just concentrate on just one topic, just just elaborate on that one topic. It does depend. There's a bit of, bit of a caveat here. So I do have clients who have got multiple things they could write about. Mm -hmm. So the first book could be an overview of what they talk about. So if it was a book on business, it could include marketing. It could include planning. It could include. Um, Facebook, it could include LinkedIn. So then touch on each one of them. Yeah, and then you might have the second book might focus on just marketing or just planning or just right, something else. Right. So some clients I work with, they so when I wrote your book as a hook, um, in, in here there's there's a whole section on marketing. Then I wrote book marketing most simple. There's a this is a whole book on marketing. So yeah, I took yeah, that yeah. one section which was made up of about three chapters, and then I wrote another book about it. Right. So what's great about that is then they kind of cross cross sell each other. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. One leads to another. One leads to another, and yeah. So that's another way of looking at it. If you know that you want to write, not everyone wants to write more than one book. No. <laughs> Some people but, one that is enough. Um, but for yeah. people who have got a series of books, um, Stephen Covey's um, Jack Canfield and um, Chicken Soup for the Soul. That's a great example of somebody who's just you know taken a concept and then he's transferred that concept the same concept to numerous books. Right. So you know, there's so many different ways you could do it. Yeah, 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 okay. So I think for, for most people, they see this writing a book at this, this great big mountain they have to climb. Yes. You know, they're like standing at the bottom going, oh my God, this is so much work. Um, where do I start? Yeah. And so you just kind of laid that down a little bit um, and kind of, okay, so the, these are the first two, yeah. right, yeah. steps of your 10 step program. I guess that's, People have to buy into this to actually learn more about it. But um, um, how long would you say the average journey is per writer to actually come up with a, with a solid book that they can publish? To go from idea to publication. Oh yeah, gosh. yeah. Um, most of my clients take about a year. A year, okay. Yeah, so give or take. Um, yeah. I said I wrote your book as a hook in six months, but I was very, very focused. You were focused. And I tend to be that person. So if I decide to write a book, I tend to, I tend to take myself away for a few days. I write 20,000, 30,000 words. I like to do it in a big chunk. I don't want to faff around with it for a year now. No. I you always never, like to do that. You know that writer's block, no way. You look at a blank page and you go, oh, what's the next thing? Or the first thing? When you've got a really good plan, you don't get to that stage. So um, the fourth thing, I'll maybe touch on the third thing in a minute, the fourth thing yeah. is about structure. Right. Because um, I was writing a blog about this um, the other day, actually. Um, you know, if you've got a really good plan and you know exactly what's going on in each chapter, you know what stories you're including, you know what the content is, mm -hmm. and you suddenly find yourself with 30 minutes free, you could get on and write in that 30 minutes. You could craft a few really good paragraphs. If you sit down for that 30 minutes and you haven't got a, a good plan, you're going to sit down for that 30 minutes and nothing is going to happen. Right. 
So do it ad hoc? Is that um, what you're saying? When, when the idea comes, you sit down and make the You time? can do. Um, I, I do recommend people plan it into their diary, but the, mm. the clearer you are on what you're writing about, the easier it is to make the most of the time you've got available. So when mm. it comes to how long it takes to write a book, um, if you've got a plan and you know kind of what's in each chapter, it makes it easier to write it. Right. So I guess you start with the chapters first. You create the chapters first and then you fill in the, the blanks. And then yeah? you fill in the blanks, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So... I mean, most, most of us have a full-time job mm -hmm. and then fitting in the extra time that it takes to write a book might be a challenge. Absolutely. How do you manage that? What's your tip on that? Well, my tip on that is if you've aligned everything, you should have content already. Mm -hmm. Content from webinars, content from interviews, content from blog posts. So a lot right. of people, when they do the planning, they'll look at, okay, what do I have already that can go into my book? So right. you might be looking at, you know, for a webinar, for example, you could easily get it transcribed on a, you know, it's on a, there's so many sites out there now that do the transcription. So yeah. you'd have ready-made content. You might have blogs you've written before. You might have videos. You know, there's, we've, we've all got so much content. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's looking at pulling together what you have already. Right. If you are delivering workshops and training on a regular basis, yeah. you know, capture some of those stories right. and make sure you know where they're going to go in the book. So either with permission or maybe a little bit of, um, you know, Creative license, so so they're not easily identifiable. Yeah. You could then include those in the book. So it's about making. For me, it's about making the process as easy as possible for people. That's good. That's good. So you're not reinventing the wheel. Actually, no, you just no. you're just looking for what you've got already, and then use that to your best ability to turn that into the subject matter that you've chosen. And yeah. that's good. That's yeah. good. And and if you've got a training course that you want to create, you know the train the book leads into the training course. Yeah, yeah. If you've got a training course already, the course could lead into the book. Right. You know, there's, there's, it's about making it as easy as possible, which is... So everything, everything is connected Everything's again, yeah? Connected, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, that's good. So what's number three then? We know structure. What's number three? It's finding your secret source. Oh, right. So what is the thing that makes your book different? Because right. writing a book, um, as, I, as I wrote in my last book, writing a book has become so popular. Since I penned my first one in 2009, yeah. everybody who wants to be someone is doing it. Right. So you need to know what makes yours different. Right, because there's a lot of books, you know, just when you when you type into Google or yeah. Amazon, you know, yeah. leadership. Oh gosh, yeah. There's like tens of thousands of books on leadership. So how do you create a niche then out of that? So I think I guess you need a lot of secret sauce for that, you know. Yeah, you do, and I think one of my um, superpowers is helping people to find that find that hook, find that thing that makes them different. So to actually really dig deep into into it, and I, I love yeah. it. I love it when I have a client who goes, "That's what it's about." And I think you can, you can use, I think yeah. a lot of people, we, we look for our USP in our business anyway. We look for that thing that makes us different. And if yeah. you know it, work with it. Yeah. It's interesting that you call it your, one of your superpowers. A superpower, yeah. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> That's good. That's good. So you draw that out of people. You speak to them. You work with them. And you go, you know what? I think you're really good at yeah. whatever. Well, I trained as a coach. And I think for me, um, I was asked this morning, actually, you said, you know, I was asked by somebody on an online networking event. Um, about um, how I do it. And I, I'm trained as a coach, clean language, NLP. Yeah. Um, gosh, so, so many things I'm you... trained in. So I just use whatever tools in my toolkit at that particular moment for you whatever that client's on. going through and right. needing help with. So, you know, obviously you don't know what you don't know. So you need to be mentored through the process because there's not much point in me coaching you about something where it's specialist knowledge that, that you wouldn't know. No. But actually, you know, we've, we've got most of our, the idea. It's about teasing it out, teasing out those nuggets. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's why I call myself a business coach and mentor because yeah. Yeah. there comes a point when your coach, the client, actually don't know what, how to yeah. do it. Yeah. And no matter how many questions you ask, they will never get to the answer. So you need to then chip in the knowledge yeah. and, and yeah. help them with that. Yeah. yeah, so I can see that very, very clear. Mm. Okay, so what's number five? Number five is the writing. Actually, it's the physical sitting physical down and doing the sitting job. Down and right. writing it. So, it done. Sitting down and yeah, getting there's it loads done. of questions I will tease out, well, ask people to get, you know, when do you write at your best? How do you write at your best? Where do you need to be? Yeah. Um, what do you need to do to do it? And as you said, Andreas, in terms of um, sitting down to write, we do need to schedule time in our diary. Uh -huh. But actually, if you had half a day of really good quality writing time each week, you yeah. should be able to get a first draft within, within six months. Yeah, so if yeah. you think, you know, a typical business building book, you know, like this, you're looking, this is probably around about 50, 55,000 words. Okay. So if you think that you could sit down and do, I don't know, two, 3,000 words a week, you know, that, that makes a book. That makes a book, That makes yeah. a first draft. Maybe it doesn't make a book, but yeah, it makes yeah. a first draft. 
Yeah, you see, I, I heard that from, I think I, I, I read it in Michael Port's book called uh, Book Yourself Solid. Have you ever heard yeah, about yeah, that? Yeah, I have, yes. You have, yeah? Yes. He says that a good good way to, to start is to do a brain dump, you know, like you, you just put it all down. It yeah. doesn't have to be precise or in order. Yeah. Just write everything down you want to write about. And then you've got this big yeah. animal of, of content in front of you. Yeah. And you might have pulled it from different sources. And then you start putting order into the mess. And it's then, all about, I get a big piece of lip chart paper. Right. I get loads of post-it notes when I'm working with clients. And we just put them all over the walls, all over the tables, wherever they need to go. You do like a mind map. Yeah, so, well, it's yeah. more of a sort of structure. I mean, you know, some clients like mind maps. Yeah. Um, I've got one client who's writing a book about mind maps, actually. But, <laughs> so, um, but for me, it's about kind of just thinking, okay, so what's the first chapter about? What's the second chapter? If you've got a signature system already, like I have, it makes it easier if you haven't. You know, you might create it as you as you start to curate the content mm -hmm. and bring it all together. Right, cool. So the actual writing, which then takes probably what the best part of a year, yeah. Yeah. Or... So if you can get a first draft within six months, would be great. Okay. And then if you allow yourself maybe two or three months to edit it, get some feedback okay. on it, and then it's getting um, the sort of the, the copy editing, proofreading, design side of things. That's a fine tuning of it. Yeah, and absolutely it depends on how you get published as well. If you're going down the traditional route. You need to add a year to that because you've got to find a publisher. You might find an agent. You're going to have to, you know, wait for them to fit it in. If you, yeah. if you publish it yourself, you should be able to get it out within a year. 